Hi everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Hey, you wanna have some easy fun today, no so fun today, making an adorable little envelope booklet that comes together very quickly. It's a nice companion for any junk journal. Um, super easy to make and I'm gonna show you a bonus way to use it, which is kinda cool. Okay, I sort of discovered it along the process of, of making it. All right, let me show you the prototype first. Okay, so here is this little example. Um, I just glued a digi kit onto the front and used some, oh, where is it? So I can show you what I used. It's a Nuvo Drops in Copper Penny, if you're looking for that one. Um, I use that one a lot. And I just um, added a few little accents, and I also did a few little blue accents, and the blue Nuvo Drops is, what color, Pam? Wedgwood Blue. Okay, there you go. Um, so the back I left plain. I just tied a simple ribbon closure on it. And so you just undo that because it, it houses goodies. And basically this would be given to somebody so that they have extra things to play with in their junk journal. And for an example purpose, I did, I filled this one with some DigiKit pictures. I just had a, um, a stack of pre-cut uh, DigiKit pictures here and I thought that would be a lot of fun to um, put in here, but you can certainly use anything that you have like punched outs, little stickers, Victorian die cuts, um, apothecary labels, old tea cards. Um, these are just some things I have sitting around that, but you have options. Plus you can also make your own art pictures, little notations, poems and quotes and tuck them in. But let's check it out. So here is the spine. <clears throat> so this spine is a naked spine um, and there's nothing, there's no sewing on the spine. It's a very simple concept. The basic construct is like this. And what I used were envelopes. Oop, let me back up a little bit. And very easy to make, um, but let's take a look inside. Okay, so the way this opens, I'm using the envelope flap as the pockets. I didn't sew or stitch or anything adhere, nothing, nothing glued. These are just tucked in here. These make great little pockets. They're easy to function in and out. You could put more than one picture in either of these, absolutely. Um, so let me just show you. I have used four envelopes here, and I didn't make a mistake in the orientation of one of course. So I'll show you how I worked around that. Oh, here's the uh, mistake. I just tucked them in from the bottom up and used them as upper tucks instead. So you can certainly do that. They still function as tucks. Um, and there you go. And you could do more decorating and stamping and things like that on here, but I just wanted to show you the basic construct. Now along with this, if you cut off the ends of your envelopes, you're also going to create natural extra pockets. So you're going to have four, I used four envelopes, you're going to have two, three, uh, four, five extra pockets. Okay, so those are nice and stuffable as well. So here I just put a bunch of stickers. Um, stickers are thin, they're easy to um, insert and pull out of here. And uh, those are fun things that you can stick in there as well. Um, so it gives you, you can put quite a bit in here. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's make one super easy. And then I'll show you the bonus way of how to use this that's completely different. All right. <clears throat> Taking four envelopes um, of similar size. So I just grabbed four envelopes that I had. Um, uh, and you can use any size. They will all work. They're just going to give you different shaped um, uh, little booklets at the end. So what I did was I arranged my envelopes all so the flap was the same way looking at me. Okay, looking at me, looking at me. Okay, and now this is, <laughs> now I'm gonna take this flap and I'm gonna turn it upside down. So the flap point is pointing up. Okay, so that's going to give us our, our fold. Okay, so we take this, we fold them all together. Okay, and we crease fold. And it's a good idea to have a bone folder here to give yourself a nice crease. You can fold them individually too. Um, that's fine. And you may want to even do that. It might be just a, like an extra fold to give extra crispness. Okay. Yeah, give it a little extra crisp. And if they're not perfect on the ends, it's okay because we're going to cut off the ends of the um, envelopes anyway. Envelopes are a great, easy way to make a booklet. Okay, so we've got all our flap tips pointing up. <clears throat> I'm double checking this time, yes. <laughs> okay. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna orient them all like this. 
Okay, so there are your envelopes and the little flap tips are up. And you're just going to glue the backs together. That's going to give the adherence between all of these. It's a simple, well-used concept. It can be used in so many ways in junk journals. If you completely want to avoid sewing, punching holes, three hole pamphlet stitch out the window and just glue. It's totally fine, totally fun. And these make great little uh, gifts as well. Okay, so we'll just make our basic construction. Uh, I'm gonna take the, uh, the back of this and because I want to create that little pocket in the center, I'm going to create a U-shaped glue line. All right, there we go. There. Oh yeah, there we go. And then a U-shaped glue line. Okay. A U-shaped glue line. Okay. And now you're going to put them all together. You have a second here to arrange them, but you want your spines in the back to be all aligned. You can do these all at once. You can do them one at a time if you want. But I like to look at the spine and make sure that the spines are all tapped down so that, see it's like that. The spines are all together. And then come along and do like the finger squeeze because that's going to adhere everything. And you've, you've made a little booklet like in, in seconds. It's fascinating. I know. Love this little concept. Okay, so see? See how those are all aligned? Pretty good, right? Not bad. And that, so there's your little book. And now um, you already have these little pockets created in between the pages. So what do we have? Three. Oh, actually, we have three pockets now. Um, if you want even more pockets, okay, we're going to level up. You can totally leave it as this and just tuck your pictures in here and here, and you are good to go. And that would be level one of this project. Uh, if you want to do level two of this project, Cut off the end here. I'm going to do this in my guillotine. I'm going to be, oh, I'll do it here with you. Wait, I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'm going to use a ruler and my craft knife, which is right here. Okay. And I'm just going to cut off the ends of all the um, envelopes. And voila, we're going to have a lot more pockets all of a sudden. You can use scissors for this. You can use your guillotine. You can use a single wire cutter. Um, but you might have to go through it a few times or do one page at a time. But when you do this downward cutting with the craft knife, you're going to get a nice flush edge. Okay, there we go. We're through. Well, now, all of a sudden, we've got a lot of extra pockets to work with. One. Oh, do see there's extra pockets in here. Those might, we got like zillions of pockets. Here's one here. Here's one between the two envelopes. And then here's even another one if you want like tons of pockets. So that's, I don't know, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you've actually got uh, a lot. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 pockets in that little guy in that fast. So that's easy, right? <clears throat> For the decor, where's my prototype? Hello, where'd you go? Do you see it? Does anybody see it? There it is. I rounded the corners. Um, on the end, just for, you know, I wanted to denote which side was the side to start turning from. This is just uh, fun. It's not mandatory, but I'm using the Crocodile Corner Chomper. There we go. And it, it chomps like a pack of things, like a thicker stack very well. So if you have something like this where you want to just round the edges, you can do that relatively quickly. And then I just want to come along with um, some inking. And I just want to do this in a vintage grunge, steampunky, sort of old world, uh, Victorian sort of way. Oh, now notice that. This is a nice easy way to fast ink the whole spine. Wherever there is not glue, the ink will grab. So that's kind of cool, right? And uh, then just do this. That'll get all your edges quickly. All right, so now we've done that. And maybe you want to hew it a little bit, like bring the ink in on the corners a little bit. It's kind of a vignette style to focus on a focal point if you want to put a focal point in there. This is a very easy make, very functional, very useful for people. <clears throat> and you can also go around and ink every uh, area here. So I'm just going to show you one and then I'm going to go ahead and ink them and, and I'll, then I'll be back. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Craft your hairball growing this morning. That's okay. And... Uh, yeah, everything is fine here. Yes, Sonny has a few things to say, uh, but he will be on later in the shoe. All right, I'll be right back and I'll finish inking these. Oh, let me, I'm going to ink this too. Okay. 
this little edge here because I just think it's going to denote the pocket more clearly. Very easy way to denote your pocket. See? There you go. And I'm just going to carry on and do the others. All right, Sally asked if I could show me inking all of them. So I am showing inking all of them. There's only four, so it's not, it's not a lot. Okay, that one. And these are all my chosen orientation of flap up. Okay. Flap up, flap up. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and decorate it. And then I'm going to show you the bonus of another way to use these, which is really cool, very easy. And so you can make two styles quickly, efficiently, and be having bowlfuls of fun before you know it, before your day has even started, you're playing with the papers, or maybe you're at night, you're playing with the papers, all is good, life is dandy, or you really don't know because it just feels good because you're crafting and everything else is still lousy, but that's okay because that's out there and you're in here with your papers, so that's a good thing. <laughs> okay, all right, there we go. So that is our front. If you were curious what size envelopes I used, because I know somebody might be curious, these are seven and a quarter by four, uh, three and three quarters, but you can really use any size. The longer the envelope, the bigger the front cover will be, okay? And the taller, you can grow these taller as well. All right, so let's pick out a pretty picture, something we want to stick on top. And uh, you can use anything, um, pictures from magazines, whatever, whatever you have. I have a nice butterfly. I'm kind of into butterflies right now, but you're nice, but I don't know. What else we got here? Take a look at what you got, Pam. You spent a lot of time cutting things up. Why don't you just... Pull some things over and let's see what you get. Okay, let's pick a, we'll pick one together. We'll pick something together, something pretty. I spent some time cutting these up and I just thought they're, they're, they're nice and at the ready. That's pretty. Oh, you're very big and beautiful. Let's see you. Might be a hair large for that one. Oh, that's very nice. A rose. Yeah, that's very pretty. Here's a tall one. Maybe too tall. Okay, so you got to find one that fits, you know, one that, one that makes you happy. That's a pretty one. I kind of like this one. All right, maybe we'll go with that one. And uh, just pick one, right, Pam? Just pick one. <laughs> but it's nice to have them pre-cut because then you can just go ahead and, and use it. That's very pretty, too. Maybe we use this one. All right, put these all over here. I'm just going to trim this up a little bit. And I'll hang out with you guys. I'm not going over to my guillotine cutter, which is so much beckoning over there. But I'm, I'm just going to cut it. These are not hard to cut. This one I printed out on uh, lightweight cardstock, 110-pound weight lightweight cardstock, um, but you can certainly print these out on printer paper. That worked. This one was actually printed on printer paper, regular printer paper, because I, I didn't really need the strength there because the whole thing was being mounted to the front cover. And what did I, I did ink it. Yes, I did. Let's ink. And we're going around, we're going around. Okay, and then we're going to glue that down. Now you could put, um, it's kind of far away. Um, you could put cheesecloth behind it. Maybe we'll do a little cheesecloth just so you can see what that looks like. Okay, I do. I have to leave the premises. I'm over here and I'm coming back with the cheesecloth. I'm returning now from once I came. This is actually not cheesecloth. This is gauze, but it kind of works the same. So whatever you come across in life, you know. Uh, got some like old bandage gauze hanging around. Just coffee dye it, tea dye it, or leave it white because it, it gives you a nice contrast. And... Let's just put a little piece down. I'm just doing extra fussing because we have a little extra time because these are, these are so quick and easy. Um, all right. Now, if everybody wonders like how to get the cheesecloth down to make it look cool, I think there's a little trick to it or there's at least, okay, sometimes when you try and put it down all pretty like, it doesn't have that nesting look. Okay, a little far away, let me see. Not too close. Okay. So um, almost the best thing to do is you just kind of sort of, here's, here's a really interesting concept. You put some glue down, okay? And then you just sort of like flop it on there to give it a little smusharoo. And I think it, within the smushing comes the artistic look. At least I think I, that's what I've, I tell myself. Okay, so there we go. Whoop, over here. All right. And then you glue that right onto the top. So that's where, so like little bits are slowly peeking out around, but not the whole thing. You know what I mean? The whole thing is a different look, but I'm going for the little peeking out. Yeah. 
And I think this one, I'm even having the urge to edge it a little bit in black to give it a little bit of more pop. So this is kind of a softy look and I'm gonna take it up, I'm gonna take it up to the next level. I'm gonna go for a more intense punch look. I'm gonna use black soot. Oh, if you're curious of the brown I was using today, it was vintage photo just dressing. Yeah, okay, shocker, huh? I know. All right, so, and you can just do the corners or you can go all the way around, however you like to ink. It's all good. It's fine. You can use different colors. You don't always have to use black and brown. No. Nope. Okay, here we go. Got going down. Oh, see, the, the pop, the poppage is much more intense. Okay. Make sure all my corners go down. There's lots of glue in there. It'll just take a second to grab because everything is a little bunchy thicker. Okay, did I get it on straight? Pretty much. Okay, so now we have that. And maybe because I have the black there, maybe I'm just going to do the edges of this in black. Honey, I'm doing a video. And uh, thank you, babe. Um, just giving it like a little darker. I mean, this one wanted to be darker. Yeah, it just said, hey, make me darker. Okay, I'm making you darker, making you darker. Okay. All right. There we go. A little more grungy. All right. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and load the pictures and then I will decorate the front a little bit more. But uh, and then I will also show you that bonus. So just stay tuned for that. All right, so let's just grab some pictures. I mean, and they can stick out of the top or not. That's totally up to you. You can trim them so they um, don't stick out of the top. But this is a nice way to give somebody some things to play with in a junk journal. And maybe they're just going to have some fun with some pretty pictures. They've seen what you're doing and then they got excited because they're thinking, oh, I love that idea, but what if I did this and that? But I don't have anything to play with because I'm so new to junk journaling and I don't know what to do about that. Um, oh, I could make a story about her and her life. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be really cool. Here's her fr very friendly sister. She's so happy to see you come over. Um, maybe we'll put some flowers behind her, soften her up a little bit. And uh, what's that? Oh, I must have been, oh, it just got stuck. <laughs> was, that, was I demonstrating? I don't remember demonstrating that. Um, okay, so you can get quite a bit in here. And I will just quickly, get in there, demonstrate the other pockets. I mean, you've got pockets till the cows come home. So let's say we want to put some stickers in here. And then this one has like a, oh, we've got like three pockets in here. One, two. Yeah, there's three pockets in there. I mean, you can load a lot of stuff in there. I'm just going to put one in so you can kind of get the idea of where these pockets are. A sticker. Lots of stuff, right? Lots of stuff. Okay. A dragonfly and some other interesting things. And you go and put some more things in the back. Now, because of the size of the spine, this thing has room to grow and it's okay to stuff it because it's not, it's not really designed to live inside the journal because it's a little bit bulky, um, but it certainly would be a nice little companion to add on top. And by now your glue has pretty much dried. And then we can go ahead and decorate this up a little bit. And let's see what we, I'm just gonna use these colors that I have here. And so on this one, you can see how I decorated it. I, yes, I smushed them. Yes, yes, I did. That happens though. Okay, um, in a, in an active craft room, things happen. Okay, here's blue. This makes no sense on here. Maybe we'll start with the copper. Um, and you can, you can decorate different ways. You can frame the picture. You can just go up the side. See, I'm not gonna touch this now because we're doing that. We're, we'll move on to the other one. You can do like side and uh, bottom. You could do like an angle here. Come all the way across. You can because it's yours and you can play with it. <laughs> All right, and then maybe maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna actually go right. No, I'm gonna go over here. Okay, that's on the cheesecloth, and but you can you can do it right on the cheesecloth. Yeah, you can. Okay, maybe turn the corner. Okay, it's just kind of fun, just little accents, um, increasing the fun game of it all. And then okay, so then to complete this little look, where did that little ribbon go? When it's all dry. I just used a little ribbon and a bow tie, but you could put a little elastic cord around it or you could punch a hole in one of these and do an eyelet and do a, a wrap with a, a, a ribbon. And you can also cover the spine if you want to, but it's not mandatory because your structure is being held together by the, uh, all the pages of the envelopes uh, glued together back to back. So it will open nice and flat and you'll have a nice little uh, 
uh, booklet here to add as a little companion to any junk journal. So now let's take this guy again. And I, I want to show you what I did with him as a different concept. So um, let me take out these uh, butterflies in here because it won't work if I show you with those. I probably stuck more in here. I can't remember. Let me just quick peek. I can't tell. Okay, but whatever. When I cut off the edges, okay, suddenly, suddenly, let me back up a little bit. Okay. Now we do have things tucked in here and you could leave those or you could remove those completely, okay? Because when you remove them, what you've created is a lot of extra writing space for somebody. I could have swore I stamped something on there. Um, apparently I did not. Okay, but what I was going to do, one, two, three, journey. One, two, three. I guess there's one missing. Where is it? I got to get a word stamp. Hold on. Oh, I got one. Okay, I got dream. So I'm just going to put, I don't think I used dream already. Well, things get away on you in the craft room. You know how it happens? You know, I know. I know, you know. All right, so maybe I'll just put that there. And uh, so it's an invitation. It almost opens like an invitation, doesn't it? But that's a lot of extra writing room somebody can use to store some thoughts. And it doesn't even look like it's there because it's hidden which is kind of cool. So um, you could use it as writing space and you could also tuck things in here so that there are fun things to play with as well. And maybe you want to make an indication that there's something to open there. Um, and that could be easily done with, oh, uh, maybe this, um, a little marker. Maybe you're gonna put a dot here, an indicator, it's an indicator there. That just tells everybody that there's something to do. No, maybe it, it doesn't. It doesn't tell you anything. Make it bigger, okay? And let them wonder. And then as they're like looking at this, they might say, oh, what is this? And what is that? Oh, does this open? Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. There's all this stuff in here. You could put lines on here for them. You could, um, you could even clip little things in here. You could clip little, uh, you could paper clip little uh, pictures and things like that in here. So there's like a lot of things that you could do, you know, I mean, these, a lot of these would even, not that one, um, <laughs> a lot of these will even fit in here and you could um, uh, put them in here for something extra to find, paper clipped or not, doesn't matter. So as we go through and we remove these, we're going to have, let me move these before I get that all through my ink. I know I've been there. Um, this one says inspire. Okay. So lots, lots of extra writing room here. This was the upside down, Pam put the envelope in the wrong way, but not going backward, going forward and seeing how we can use it. And then this one says create. Yeah, kind of cool, right? And uh, because nothing is glued and nothing is sewn, it is all just um, interesting, playful paper for them to explore. So there you go. Here is that little example of this little guy. Just a fun, quick and uh, easy little project today with four envelopes, no sewing involved. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, uh, Sunshine, do you have something to say? Um, yes, yes, I have something to report. Um, can you please levitate me up to... The, I'm coming. Okay, I'm out of my bed. I'm floating over as we speak. I'm being rotated upside down. And I am now here. Hello, everybody. It's sunshine. Oh, okay, so um, I have a little confession. Yes, yes, I do. Um, I am an ankle biter. Yes, yes, I am. And I'm not the, like, cute little ankle biter that's nibbling at your toes. No, I see them as prey. Yes, each and every toe is prey. Unsuspecting prey when mama's walking around the house and she takes those little prey toes with her everywhere. Sometimes, snack, I pounce. <laughs> I pounce on those toes and I get them. And I use my best alligator move and I jump on them. Yep, there we go. Up, oh, dad's doing something. What, dad, what are you doing up there? You're walking around making a lot of noise. Mom's doing a video. Yep, there he is, all distracto. So anyway, I just want to confess. Oh, there he goes. He's going in the kitchen. You know what that means. He might drop something. I think I have to go now. Oh, no, he's not going in the kitchen. He's going back, back upstairs. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, everybody, I just wanted to let you know that I am confessing that I am an ankle biter. I love you all. Take care. Bye. Happy crafting. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Okay. I think you can't, it's good you came clean, man. Yeah. It's good you came clean. All right. <laughs> He's okay. He's okay with it. So we're working. We're working counseling with that. Yes, we are. Yes. Pretty much it starts with, please don't angle my, <laughs> don't, bite, don't bite my toes. <laughs> so a lot of don't bite my toes. Um, so anyway, the big finale here is just tying a little ribbon. And this is just some pretty ribbon I found along the merry way. Goodness knows where it came from, but I think it's, it's really pretty ribbon. And it really doesn't matter if your ribbons match exactly, or you can make them completely complementary in color. But there you go. Wouldn't that be fun? You could also put little gift cards and things like that in here. You could, um, you know, tuck them in your Christmas tree for little gifts for people to find. You could put them on top of gifts as little extra goody things. And there you go. So that is the presentation for today. Thank you very much for spending time with me. I truly appreciate uh, each and every one of you. Um, as you choose to spend time here, that I honor greatly. So um, uh, if you are new here and you haven't heard about my um, new uh, newsletter, it's a free monthly emailed newsletter. And why would you want to sign up for that? Why? Because you get a free digital image um, emailed to you every month. Uh, all you, you can find it in PDF and JPEG format at the bottom of my email, along with the other freebies, which are a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is, checklist of supplies that you might want to keep your eyes open for as you traverse the world, looking for fun junk journal things. And remember, everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise. So yeah, keep those peepers open. And um, Never say to yourself, I can't find stuff to work with. No, there's tons of stuff everywhere. Uh, we'll take some expeditions and find stuff. We'll just walk around the house and show you this and that and this and that and this and that. And um, uh, you can also find a list of page ideas where I take one idea and I show you four different ways to use the same concept in a junk journal. It's called the Never Endless Page Ideas List uh, Playlist. And I keep adding to that. And um, so you're going to see the list in the um, newsletter, but then I'm going to demonstrate how to take those uh, ideas and actually turn them into different things. And you're not limited at four. There's about a bajillion ways you can use every idea in a junk journal. So there you go. And I have my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's the new audio material. You're also going to find video podcasts, which you can easily watch on Spotify, um, on Salt and Peppered In on the other days of the week. And also I have an Etsy shop, and I sell journals and bundles of journals and things like that when they are ready and special kits and things like that related to junk journals. For example, I sell uh, fundals, which are collections of very old or very interesting papers such as antique ledger pages, music pages, dictionary pages, science pages, nature pages, um, foreign language pages, and so many other categories. You get over um, oh, hand-dyed paper, yeah, vintage book pages, did I say that? And um, uh, magazine, all just some fun stuff. And uh, then, and if you're a historian or a collector, you're going to find a lot of intriguing pieces in there that you might might uh, raise an eyebrow. You might go, ooh, look at that. Um, and also, if you're just a fun junk journal crafter, maybe you don't have an opportunity to find and experience all these different types of paper, and you want to get a feel for it to see if they're compelling and, and you enjoy that, this is a great way to sample test a lot of things and so that you can keep your eyes open when you're out there traversing your world online or by foot and uh, looking for things that you want to add to your junk journal collection of stash. And then I also have a print and mail service and I have a digi kit. Um, I have uh, vintage digi kits which are basically printables. You buy the um, uh, the computer files and then you can um, download them as many times as you want. You can save them on your devices. You can print them out and use them in your artwork any way you like. If you don't have an at-home printer, you, I have a print and mail service where if you give me the names of 10 digi kits, I will package, print them out on lightweight cardstock, package them all up for you and mail them to you. Uh, and free priority shipping is included with one flat price. You don't need to buy the individual digi kits. And um, I have uh, an Amazon shop. And oh, just email me the names of the digi kits so I know which ones to send you. And it's pam at the .com, or you can just ask Etsy message me. So you would buy the um, 
print and mail option in Etsy and then just send the list of 10 DigiKit names. I only need the first two or three words and you're off and running. I have an Amazon shop if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies that you see me use here on the channel. I have a, it's an affiliate link. I have a merchandise shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon and you would like to see that on a, a t-shirt or a sweatshirt for a loved one or for yourself or a family member um, and have some fun with that. You, there's um, zipped hoodies, totes, mugs, um, sweatshirts, t-shirts, all sorts of fun things that you can put them on. Or they are on already. You just purchase them and they will be shipped directly to you. And that, oh, okay, I'm getting a phone call. Okay. I, oh, oh. Is, am I still recording? I don't know. I, am I? Am I recording? I think I am. Okay. I don't know if you saw that, but my, apparently my car is ready. It's being fixed. <laughs> okay. And um, it, you can find me on uh, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Facebook group. And uh, come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges. And also, um, I think that's everything. You, Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. So remember, most of all, remember that fun, it can be simple. And create with reckless abandon. Go have some paper fun today because it's awesome. Uh, it's a great way to spend your time. All right, take care, everybody. And I'll see you back at the old table very soon. Bye-bye.